Good afternoon and welcome back to the classiest show in technology. This is theCUBE, we are at AWS reInvent 2022 in fabulous Sin City. That's why I've got my sequins on, we love a little Vegas, don't we? I'm joined by John Furrier, another, uh, another Vegas fan. I don't have my sequins on, I left it in my room. We're going to have to figure out how to get us okay. twinning as, All right. as soon as possible. What's <laughs> been your biggest shock for you at the show so far? Well, I think the data story and security is so awesome. I love how that's front and center. If you look at the minutes of the keynote of Adam Skolewski, the CEO, on day one, it's all bulked into data and security, all worked hand in hand. That's on top of already the innovation of their infrastructure. So I think you're going to see a lot of interplay going on in this next segment. It's going to tell a lot of that innovation story that's coming next. It's pretty awesome. It is pretty awesome, and I'm super excited. It's not only what we do here on theCUBE, it's also in my show notes. We are going to be geeking out for the next segment. <laughs> Please welcome Paul and Pujan. Wonderful to have you both here. Paul from Amazon S3 Glacier, and Pujan, CEO of Clumio. I want to turn to you, Pujan, to start us off. Just in case the audience isn't familiar, give us the Clumio pitch. Yeah, so basically Clumio is a backup as a service offering, right, built in AWS, for AWS, right? And effectively going after you know, any service that a customer uses on top of AWS, right? And so a lot of the data sitting on S3, right? So that's been like our, our, our big use case, going and basically building backup and air gap protection for, for S3, where we basically go to every other service, EC2, EBS, Dynamo, you know, you name it, right? So basically do the whole thing. And the relationship with AWS, can you guys share? I mean, got you here together, you guys are a great partnership, born in the cloud. Operation in the cloud. Absolutely. Talk I about think. the partnership with AWS. Absolutely. I think the last five years of building on AWS has been phenomenal, right? And I love the platform. It's a, it's a very pure platform for us. You know, the APIs and, and the access you get, and the access you get to the service teams, like Paul sitting here and the other teams you have gotten access to, I think has been phenomenal. And, but we also have, I would say, pushed the envelope in terms of how innovative we have been and how aggressive we have been in utilizing all the innovation that AWS has built in over the last few years. Uh, but it would not have happened without the fantastic partnership with the service teams. Paul, talk about the, M the S3 part of this. What's the story there? Um, well, it's been great working with the Clumio team over the course of the last few years. We were just upstairs diving deep into the, to the features that they're taking advantage of. They really push us hard uh, on behalf of customers and it's, been a, it's just been a great relationship over the last years. That's awesome, and the ecosystem, and such a, we're going to hear tomorrow the keynote on the, from Ruba who's going to attend them over the ecosystem. You guys are working together. There's a lot of strategic partnerships so much collaboration. between you guys that makes it very, this is the next gen kind of cloud environment we're seeing. And you heard the, the economies around the corner, it's still going to be challenging, but still there's more growth in the cloud. This is not stopping. This is, impacts the customers. What are the customers saying to you guys when you work backwards from their needs. They want it faster, easier, cheaper, they want it more integrated. What are some of the things All those that you things. guys are hearing from yeah. customers? So for us, you know, if you think about it, like, you know, uh, as people are moving to the cloud, especially like you take, take a use case like S3, right? So much of critical data sitting on top of S3 today. And so what folks have realized that as they're, you know, putting all of those, you know, what, over 250 trillion objects, you know, sitting on S3, a lot of them need backup and data protection because there could be accidental deletions, there could be software bugs, there could be a ransomware type event due to which you need a second copy of the data that is outside of your security domain, right? But again, that needs to get be done at, a, at the right price point, right? And that's where like, a technology like Clumio comes in because since we've been built on the cloud, we've optimized it correctly, so especially for folks who are very cost conscious given the macroeconomic conditions we are heading into, uh, a, a technology that's built correctly so that you, know, you get the right architecture and the right solution at the right price point, and the scale, right? Talking about trillions of objects, billions of objects within a single customer, within a single bucket sometimes, and that's where Clumio comes in, because we basically do that at scale without, again, impacting the, the customer's wallet more than it needs to. The porridge has to be the right temperature in the right size bowl with the right spoon. You've got a lot of complexity when it comes to solving those customer challenges. You have a couple customer story examples you're allowed to share with us, correct? Paul, do you want to kick one off? Go ahead, Pooja. Then. Oh, Pooja, yeah. all right. <laughs> no, absolutely, I think there's a ton of them. I'll, I'll talk about you know, one to, to begin with, like Cox Automotive, right? Uh, a phenomenal customer that you know, we've, all of us have worked together with them. And again, looking for a solution to back up S3 to essentially go air gap protection outside of their account, right? They looked at doing it themselves, right? They, they thought they'll go and basically do it themselves and then they 
unfortunately, you know, we bumped into Clumio. They looked at our architecture, looked at what it would really go and take to build it. And guess what? We're sitting in 2022, getting to 2023 right now. Nobody wants to go and build this themselves. They actually want a turnkey solution that just does it, right? And so again, they're a phenomenal joint customer of ours doing this at a pretty massive scale, right? And there are many more like that. There's Warner Brothers that are essentially going into the cloud from on-premises, right? And they are going really fast, accelerating their usage uh, on AWS. Again, looking at you know, backup and data protection and using Clumio because of our extreme simplicity that we provide. Yeah, I think it's, you've got a, a lot of different people solving different problems that you're working with all the time. Millions of customers. Paul, how do you prioritize? Well, uh, for us it really all comes down to fundamentals, right? So Amazon S3's unique uh, distributed architecture delivers industry leading durability, availability, performance, and security at virtually unlimited scale, right? And it's really been delivering on the fundamentals that has earned the trust of so many customers of all sizes uh, and industries over the course of over 16 years now. In terms of how we prioritize on behalf of those customers, we always say that 90% of our roadmap comes directly from what customers are telling us uh, is important. And um, a large number of our customers now are using S3 through Plumio, which is why the relationship is so important. Uh, we're here talking about customer use cases here at the show, and we do that regularly throughout the year uh, as well, and that's, that's how we land on a roadmap. And what are the, what are the top stories from customers? What, what are they telling you? What's the number one, top three things you're hearing? Uh, I tell you, like, again, it just comes down to the fundamentals, right? Uh, of security, availability, durability, and performance at virtually unlimited scale. Like, that is the first, custom, first discussions that we have with yeah. customers talking about durable storage, for sure. What I find interesting, and in, you mentioned scale, right? That yeah. comes up a lot. Scale with data. Yeah. So we heard data, the big theme here, security. What's in my S3 bucket? Can you find out what's in there? Is it backed up properly? How do I get it back? Where's the ransomware? Why not just target the ransomware? So how do you navigate the, the security challenges, the, uh, the need to store all that scaled data? What's the secret sauce? Yeah, so I think the, the big thing is, we'll start with the, you know, how we have architected the product, right? If you think about it, this, you're dealing with a lot of scale, right? You get to 100 million, a billion, and billions very fast on S3, if you especially are a cloud native application. So, it starts with the visibility, right? It's basically about like, we have things where you do, where you create a subset of your buckets called protection groups that you can essentially you know, do it based on prefixes. So now you can essentially figure out what prefix you want to back up and what you don't want to back up. Maybe there's log data that you don't care about. So you don't back that up, right? And it all starts with that visibility that you give and the prefix level data protection. Then comes the scale, which is where I was telling you, right? We have basically built an orchestration engine Right, it's like we call it the Kubernetes for lambdas, right? So we have an internal orchestration engine, and essentially what, what we have done is we have a, our own language internally that spawns off these lambdas, right? And they go after these S3 partitions, do the right things, and then you basically reel them back. So things like that that, that we do that are not possible if you're not built on the well, cloud. Well, also, I mean, just mind blowing, go back 10 years. Yeah. I mean, you got lambda, what you're talking about here is the gift of cloud innovation. Yeah. So the benefit of S3 is now accelerated. Yeah. This is the story this year. Yeah. I mean, they're highlighting it at scale, not just in the data, but like what we knew when Lambda came out and what S3 could do, but now mainstream solutions are coming in. Does that change your backup plans? Because we're going to see a lot more end-to-end, -end, a lot more solutions. We heard that in the keynote. Um, some are saying it's more complexity. Of course it might, but you can abstract that away with the cloud. That's the best part of the cloud. So these abstraction lights. So what's your view on that? I want to get your thoughts because you guys are perfectly positioned for this scale, but there's more coming. Yes, yes, exactly. You, how are you looking at that? So again, I think the, you know, obviously the, the S3 teams and every team in AWS is basically pushing the envelope in terms of innovation, but the key for a partner like us is to go and take that innovation, a lot of complex architectures behind the scene, but what you deliver to the customer is simple. I'll give you one more example. One of the things we launched that you know, Paul and others are very excited about is this ability to do instant access on the backup, right? So you could have billions of objects that you backed up, Maybe you need just 10,000 of them for a DR test. And we can basically create like an instant virtual bucket on top of that backup 
that you can instantly re restore. Spinning up a sandbox of temporary data to go check it out. Exactly, or, for, a, or for a test and dev application. I think right? we're geeking out right now. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> we're at that part of the segment, John. Don't worry, we're, we're safely there. But, but that's the thing, right? That all that is possible because of all the, the scale and innovation and all the APIs and everything that you know, Paul and the team gives us that we go and build on top of. Paul, geek out on with us. On we this. are super excited for Instant Restore, for I sure. Mean, automation, it, yeah. programmability. It is, I mean, it's the logical next step for backup it, in the exactly, cloud. Exactly, yeah. But it's a super hard engineering problem to go solve for customers. I mean, the RTO benefits alone are super compelling, but then there's a cost element as well of not having to bring back all that stuff for a test restore, for example. And so it's it's been really great to, to work with the team on that. We have yeah. some ideas on how we yeah. may help solve it from our side. and. We're looking forward to collaborating on it. This is a great illustration of what I was writing about this week around the classic cloud, which is great, and, as Adam said, and he's like to use the word and, and you got this new functionality we're seeing emerge from the growth, yes. from the companies that are built on Amazon Web Services that are growing. You're a partner, they have a lot of other partners, and people are taking over restaurants Lots here. Of action. I mean, there's real <laughs> growth and new functionality on top of AWS. You guys are no different. What's, are you prepared for that? <laughs> are you ready to go? Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think if you think, about, if, if you think yes. about it, right, I think it's also about doing this without impacting the primary application. Like if the customer is running a primary application at scale on S3, a, a backup application like ours can't come in and really mess with that. So I think being able to do things where, and this is where you solve really hard computer science problems, right, where you're yeah. throttling yourself. If you're essentially seeing any kind of, you know, interfering with the primary, you're going to cut yourself down. You're going to go after a different partition. So there are a lot of things you need to do behind the scenes, which is again, all that complexity, all of that, but deliver the, to the customer a very simple thing. You know, Paul, I want to get your thoughts, and Pujan, I want you to chime in. Yeah. In 2014, I interviewed Steven Schmidt, my first interview with the, he was the CISO then, and now he's the CSO and, and former CISO. He's, back at that time, the word was, the cloud's not secure. Now we're talking about security, just in the complexity of how you're partitioning and managing your sub portions, however you explained it, it's harder for the attackers. The cloud in its, in its architecture has become a more secure environment. Yeah, well, and getting more secure as you have laying out this. This is a new dynamic. This is good, can you explain the I mean, I, I can just tell you that at AWS, security is job zero and that it will always be our number one priority, right? Uh, we have a, 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 an infrastructure with, uh, under AWS that is vetted and um, approved to run even top secret uh, workloads, which benefits all customers in all regions. And your, your security posture is embedded on top of that, and you got your own stuff. Yeah, and if you think about it, it's a shared responsibility model. So security of the cloud is the responsibility of the cloud provider but then security of the data on top of it. Like you, you go and delete stuff, your software goes and does something. That resiliency, the integrity of the data is your responsibility as a customer and that's where you know, we come in okay. to really Shared protect that. Shared responsibility has been such a hot topic all week. Yeah. I got to ask him one more question because this is fascinating and we were talking about on theCUBE all day today after we saw the announcement and Adam's comment on theCUBE, Adam Slesky's comment on the keynote I mean, he said if you're going to tighten your belt, meaning economic cost recovery, right sizing, if you want to tighten your belt, come to the cloud. So I have to ask you guys, Pooja, if you can comment, it'd be great. There's a lot of other competitors out there that aren't born on AWS. Um, what is the customer going to do when they tighten the belt? What does that mean? They're going to go to the individual contracts? They're going to work in the marketplace? I mean, there's a new dynamic in town. It's called AWS 2022. They weren't really around much in the recession of 2008. They were just starting to grow. Now they're an economic force. People like yourselves have embedded in there. There's a lot of competition. What's going to happen? I think people are going to just go to a place like you know, AWS Marketplace. You're going to essentially look for solutions and essentially like, and, and the right solutions built in are going to be self-service, like AWS. It's a very self-service thing. 100%. So you go and do self-service, you figure out what's working, what's not working. Also the model has to be consumption oriented. No longer can you expect the customer to go and pay a bunch of money for shelfware. Right, it's like, like how we charge, how AWS charges, which is you pay for what you consume. That and all has to be front and center. I think, right. that's, a really, I think that's a really important point. It's time. And I think it's time. So we have a new challenge on theCUBE. We give you 30 seconds, roughly, to give us your extraordinarily hot take, 
your shining thought leadership moment and, and highlight what you think is the most important takeaway from the show, the biggest sound bite, the juiciest announcement. Paul, I'll start with An you. An Instagram reel, basically. <laughs> yeah. Okay? Yeah. I, I would just say from an S3 perspective, over the course of the last several years, we've really seen workload shift from just backup and recovery and static images on websites to data lake analytics applications, and you continue to see that here. And I can tell you that some of these scaled applications are running at enormous, mind-blowing scale, right? And so every year we come here, we talk to customers, and it's just every year, it sort of blows me away. And I've been in the storage industry for a long time, and it's just is, it blows me away, just the scale at customers are running in. Mind-blowing scale. And when it comes to backup, let me just say that it's easy to backup and recover a single object, but doing an easy thing a billion or 10 billion times over, that's actually quite hard. And just to, just to bold that a little bit, just pull out my highlighter, S3 now has over 280 trillion objects. That's a lot. It's a lot of objects. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you are not you are not kidding when you talk about scale. I mean, this is the most scalable <laughs> that's solution right. out there. Yeah, yeah. Th that's right. And we wake up every we have a culture of durability, and we wake up every single day to raise the bar on the fundamentals and make sure that every single one of those objects is protected and safe. Okay, wow. your Instagram reel. I can't reel. imagine worrying about two, <laughs> 280 trillion <laughs> okay. <different> things. Okay, <laughs> yeah. let's go. Your Instagram reel. Now for me again, you know, between S3 and us, we are two players out there that are really you know processing the data at the end of the day, right? And so I'm very excited about you know, what we are going to do more and more with the instant restore capability, where we can integrate third party services on top of it, that can do more things with the data that is not, not passively sitting, but now becomes active data that you can analyze and do things with. So that's something where we take this to the next level is something that I'm super excited about. There's a lot to be excited about, and, and we're excited to have you. We're excited to hear what happens next. Excited to see more collaboration like this. Paul Pujan, thank you so much for joining us here on the show. Thank all of you for, for tuning in to our continuous wall-to-wall, -wall, super thrilling live coverage of AWS reInvent here in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. With John Furrier, I'm Savannah Peterson. We're theCUBE, the leading source for high-tech coverage.